An echocardiogram is the one of the base tests in cardiovascular medicine. I mean, we learn so much from an echocardiogram that following an ECG, um, uh, which is looking at the electricity part, we often want to um, move on and, and look at the structure and function of the heart muscle, as well as the valves in your heart. Um, as you age, your, your heart muscle uh, can do a number of things. It can dilate, it can um, stretch a bit, it can reduce the overall power and function of the heart. It can also get stiff and, and, and not be able to relax as well as possible. And all of these things can feed into symptoms such as breathlessness, um, chest discomfort, uh, and a feeling of overall tiredness. Um, as people age as well, we also want to look at their valves because just like joints as you age, your, your valves can stiffen up, they can um, cause increased pressure in the heart, they can also leak so blood can move back where it's just came from and all of those things it, it, we could only ever see using um, an ultrasound of your heart at a basic level uh, and it's something that only takes 20 to 30 minutes to do and another 10 to 15 minutes to report. So that's why we can give you that information on the day rather than having to wait weeks and months to get an answer. So an, uh, an echocardiogram is in essence an ultrasound. So it's, it's, it's using um, ultrasonic waves to shine into your body, almost like the sonographer holds the probe a bit like a torch and we're, we're shining the um, uh, ultrasound into your body and, and the probe is actually recording what is coming back um, and what that does is allows us to build a, a black and white image of the structures inside the body so it's a way of seeing in without um, being invasive and that allows us to look in real time at how the heart muscle is moving and with quite uh, significant detail at how some of the smaller aspects of the heart uh, is working like the valves and as you know there's four valves in the heart that we'd look at we can also measure blood flow within the heart because the ultrasound can tag the movement of blood cells and it's able to do something called color flow doppler where we can see if blood is moving in the right direction or not uh, whether it's moving away from the probe or towards the probe so it, it is the you know from a non-invasive perspective uh, and, and from a basic perspective, it's the best way to look at the heart um, in a short space of time. If you wanted to go to the next level, then you've, you have um, scans such as cardiac MRI, which are um, more detailed, more lengthy, more expensive. Um, but I think as a baseline test in cardiovascular medicine, then the echo is the undisputed king. Yeah, an echo is perfectly safe because we're not, um, you know, doing anything invasive. We're simply dropping a bit of jelly on your chest. Um, the only thing that patients sometimes complain about is that it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable when uh, the probe is pushed between the rib spaces because what we're trying to do is see between your ribs. Um, because if you put ultrasound against a rib, it just reflects back and you don't get any pictures. So... Um, occasionally people will say, oh, it just felt a little bit tender when they were pressing. So um, I would just make sh uh, you know, sure that's explained to the patient that it, it shouldn't hurt. And if it is hurting, just to let the sonographer know and, and they, they will uh, relax a bit. Because um, obviously they're trying to get the best pictures they can um, with sometimes quite um, uh, challenging patients. Um, so it's, you know, it's very, very safe. So here in Venturi, they come into the waiting room, um, they you know, check in, they might have a, um, a tea or a, a drink, uh, and then the sonographer would call them through to the room. They'd be asked whether they want a chaperone to be present. Um, they would be asked to dress into a, 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 a gown, which is open at the front. Um, they will be offered, um, ladies will be offered modesty covers um, so that they don't feel exposed. And then it's basically lying on a, it's not, the patient doesn't have to do that much, it's basically lying on a sofa on your left hand side, occasionally with your arm above your head or moving around to the to lie on your back whilst the sonographer moves around sort of four different areas of the chest wall with a probe trying to get the best pictures of the heart that they can. Uh, and it takes about 
uh, half an hour. Um, um, if it's a challenging case, maybe longer. And then the results are available almost immediately um, due to the software we've got. So we can probably get your measurements and everything done there on the day and, and give you that um, report away. So the next steps following an echo depend on basically what we're looking for. Um, we, we obviously want to see that your heart muscle is working well, that it's contracting well, it's not thickened, it's not dilated, it's not restricted, it's not struggling to, to um, relax and that your valves are all opening well and closing well and not leaking or being too stiff. We also check the size of your aorta, which is the main blood vessel coming out your body. Um, and, and that's important because some people are dilating their aortas up. And then depending on what it shows, if it's if it's completely normal, we give you, you know, very much reassuring information that, you, you know, you don't have heart failure, you don't have valve problems and you can rest easy on that. But if you do have something wrong, then, you know, you're in the right place to get the best advice for what's next. And, and that might be that you, you need to have your heart arteries looked at. It might be that you need an MRI scan to look in more detail at your heart muscle. It might be we need to put you on the treadmill and walk you and see what happens. So it all depends on what we find, but hopefully in most cases it's, it's reassuring news.